Violent Attack on Camp Ashraf Southern Flank, January 7th, 2011 In a conspiracy against Ashraf residents, the Iranian regime's embassy in Baghdad, with assistance from the Ashraf Suppression Committee affiliated to the Iraqi Prime Ministry, dispatched a number of its Iraqi paid thugs to Ashraf's southern flank under the pretext of Iraqis who demand the expulsion of Ashraf residents. They were intended to support the MOIS agents who have been psychologically torturing the residents with 180 loudspeakers. This plot followed the Spanish National Court ruling and the beginning of the investigation on the crimes committed in July 2009 against Ashraf residents and the hasty visit to Iraq by the Mullah's acting foreign minister in order to control the fatal consequences of this ruling for the Iranian regime and its Iraqi affiliates. The plan was laid out a few days ago at the Iraqi Prime Ministry in Baghdad with the presence of Ali Yasseri, head of the Ashraf Suppression Committee, Committee Member Sadiq Mohammad Kazem, Lieutenant Colonel Abdul Latif Abdul Amir, and a representative of the Iranian Embassy. Two well-known Iranian regime agents by the names of Nafe Isa and Sheikh Jabar al-Ma'muri directed this plot. These two individuals are known to frequently travel to Iran, being paid by the Iranian regime for such actions as the recent conspiracy carried out on January 7th. Sadr Mohammad Kazem of the Ashraf Suppression Committee is the same individual who ordered the shooting of Ashraf residents during the July 2009 attacks. He was in command of the whole plot on January 7th. By bringing its Iraqi proxies behind Ashraf's vicinity and tearing its fence, the Iranian regime's goal in this conspiracy was to claim the Iraqi people demand the expulsion of the PMOI from Ashraf and Iraq. However, the people of Iraq who have demonstrated their overwhelming support for Ashraf time and again in the past refrain to participate and only a number of men and women from the cities of Basra, Emare, Nasiriya and Baghdad aging mainly from 15 to 18 were brought to Ashraf. At the end, despite an extensive campaign, less than 200 people gathered. 21 buses of one color and one model belonging to the Iraqi government transferred only 50 people to Ashraf. Many of these people were not even aware of the reason of their presence outside Ashraf. The Iranian regime designated its media to this plot. Al-Alam and Press TV, the Arabic and English language TV networks of the Iranian regime, set up SNGs at the scene to broadcast live the ridiculous show. However, the scene was so absurd that they only were able to air a few reports. The agents recruited by the clerical regime's embassy in Baghdad and the Iraqi Prime Ministry's office at one point unsuccessfully began to tear a part of Ashraf's southern fence using shovels and picks. Around noon, they began throwing stones, broken glasses, sharp objects and metal rods inside Ashraf, injuring 176 Ashraf residents. Ninety-one of those wounded were women. The attackers also used Molotov cocktails against the residents. In an attempt to distort the facts, the Iranian regime's Arab TV reporting live from the scene resorted to ridiculous lies saying the residents of Ashraf who are armed attacked the demonstrators and reporters by throwing stones, injuring a number of them. Al-Alam even goes as far as to claim that Ashraf residents are psychologically torturing Iranian intelligence agents and the Iraqi troops with their slogans. Sadat Kazim from the committee sends Omar Khaled, the Iraqi director of the occupied hospital of Ashraf, 
to see the thugs and to claim that they have been injured by Ashraf residents. Injured residents were taken to Ashraf hospital. However, under the orders of Lieutenant Colonel Nazar, second in command of the Iraqi battalion in Ashraf, Dr. Omar Khaled, director of the hospital, throws out the patients and refrains from providing them medical treatment. Ashraf residents have asked the United Nations and U.S. forces to provide medical care to those who are seriously injured. The Iraqi forces at the scene not only stood aside watching the attack take place, they actually encouraged the mob to throw stones at the residents. They even began throwing stones at the residents themselves and even aimed their weapons at the residents inside Ashraf. The suppressive acts carried out against Ashraf by Maliki's forces and agents of the clerical regime, including the attack on Friday, January 7th, are flagrant violations of the Fourth Geneva Convention and other international treaties. As stated in the Spanish National Court ruling dating December 27, 2010, the perpetrators of these crimes must be brought before justice and punished under the framework of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and crimes against the international community. Today's brutal aggression on Ashraf leaves no doubt that the Iraqi forces not only lack the intent or competence to protect Ashraf, yet they are actually preparing to carry out further killings and a humanitarian catastrophe in Ashraf, all under a policy dictated by the Iranian regime. Therefore, as a first step, the Ashraf Suppression Committee must be annulled and the case of Ashraf be transferred to the Iraqi parliament and those who are not influenced by the Iranian regime. Also, it is the obligation of U.S. forces and the U.N. to assume the protection of Ashraf residents to avert another killing spree.